This is uh, beeches, beech trees uh, in mist above Scalber Force, the gorge above Scalber Force. It was actually made in uh, the same session as the uh, uh, as the picture of the beech trees reaching down over uh, over the gorge, and uh, it's it's a picture that uh, was for me uh, a uh, very very easy to make. Uh, in some ways, uh, it was it was almost effortless. Uh, it's as if I was presented with many many op opportunities. Um, but I realised that all I had to do was to uh, to respond uh, to the the simple mood uh, of the op of the opportunity, uh, and I, I did that here by essentially simplifying the elements uh, and, and composing them accordingly. So it's not not a difficult picture to make, uh, and I think I think that's one of its strengths. Yeah. Did you, did you use any particular camera uh, movements? And there were, especially when taking pictures of trees, you might need. Uh, rise or fall to be, be able to keep things. In. Well, the, this is an elevation. Um, I'm standing up, uh, high up, looking looking down, um, and uh, I've got to say I can't remember. But yeah. I, I would think that if I did use a movement, it would have definitely been uh, drop front or rising back mm. because I like to avoid obvious distortions. Yes. Uh, so I, I, I would like look at the uh, at the scene, and and if I'm using a wide angle lens, and I think it was relatively wide. Uh, and I were to have pointed the camera down, then it would have made the, the trees, the trees would that, bend, yes. um, get a keystone effect yeah. uh, in practice. So uh, by using the drop front, the perspective control of the camera, it's possible to keep everything looking just right, just as as we see it. And yes, it was made with uh, with a view camera. So that that was a help. The the one thing I'll point out right away is that the uh, that the uh, the luminosity is inherent. It is very much part of the misty condition, the light, uh, and all of that, and and that's very deliberate. If you look at now with this black ground, we can see there's nothing that's anywhere near black. No. Uh, and I think landscape photographers will typically tend to make their pictures stretch out over from from almost absolute black to virtual white in the picture. And I think it's really important to recognise what a, what an image is about. This is so much about the softness of the light, uh, the misty condition, and uh, and and so having the uh, even the darkest colours not much darker than a midtone, uh, except possibly just here, um, is right in in my view. And in fact, I think I lightened uh, uh, the whole uh, the whole file a little bit um, to prepare it, but that's all I I did do. It didn't really require any additional work at all. It's interesting how the the branches and leaves in the top right hand corner, which are a lot close to you, have got a, a, an amazing crispness to them in comparison with the background. If we go to absolutely, if we go to one hundred percent a second, it's quite interesting to see how that's resolved itself in terms of of kind of technically. You can see these individual raindrops at one hundred percent. They're not too overt, but I think if you were to make a big print, you would definitely be aware of them. Uh, and the way uh, that so that's a little bit out of focus in the immediate foreground. The background here is actually slightly out of focus. If we go across, whoops, that's the wrong thing to do. Uh, we can see that this is really, really sharp. And I'd like to think, I hope, that what I did, and the reason that it looks this way, is that I used a little bit of swing. So these elements which are closer, and these elements which are further away, are brought together by the swing mechanism. And for those not familiar with movements in cameras, can you explain rough, roughly how, how that works, or, I'll try. or the effect of it? I'll more try, yes. Uh, Generally speaking, the depth of field of, of a picture uh, is described by a, uh, a zone, uh, and at the centre of that zone is a, uh, a plane of sharp focus. The plane of sharp focus on the camera, on most cameras, is absolutely parallel to the film plane or the sensor plane or the back of the camera, let's say. With so, a view, it's, so it's flat like it's, a canvas in front of you. It's almost. flat. It literally, as, as we see it then, that plane of focus would extend an infinitely large amount in theory. Um, this is all to do with the laws of optics. It goes a long way back into the history of photography. But that generally works well in photography. And things get relatively softer 
beyond and in front of that plane of focus. Yeah. With the view camera, you can control the plane of focus. You can you can actually make it do that, or you can make it tilt, um, or you can make it swing, which is why we use the term swing. And you actually have to uh, orientate the lens plane and the capture plane in relation to one another in order to achieve that and make them converge at a kind of hinge point, uh, as we call it. And, and that's a, an additional control. Now, how important is it in this picture? It's not that important, but it's interesting to look at it at 100% and see uh, that the control that that gives. Because I think it is important that those are sharp, and I, I'm pleased that that is sharp as well. So um, I'll give myself a bit of credit there. Uh, but having said that, what is the main theme of this picture? I think it's, it's the theme is light uh, and gesture. And that, that dissolving light, which is a, a, a concept that I, I learned from the, the great John Blakemore, uh, who speaks of light so eloquently and lyrically, and, and, and learning to understand that language, uh, I think does help to shape the direction of your work, or my work, let's say. Um, and th this tree, uh, or sort of this picture of trees, I think, is, is a good example of that. Um, gesture, uh, another Blakemore concept is in the way that uh, non-human things express human emotion and human ideas and human feelings. Yes. And trees particularly do that awfully well. Uh, and while we might not think of them as, as humans, we could think at least in terms of tree spirits and the way that, that they relate to one another, the way that they converse together. Uh, and I think that in your imagination you can imagine, well, I, I think I can, um, you know, a form of dance or choreography or conversation or whatever word you you would wish to express to to understand that these trees have a relationship and relationships are very very important in life and they're very very important in landscape photography 